Hey, it's me, MLB. Here's chapter 37 of Touched. This one is titled A Lead. What else does that mouth do? He leered as he pulled back from the kiss, keeping his arms either side of you up against the wall and caging you in. You were hyperventilating so hard your mouth couldn't even formulate a comeback, so you just stood there gazing bashfully into his golden eyes as he stared you down. You have no idea how gorgeous you are, Yin, he said suddenly and softly. His current statement is making a complete 180 from his previous question. His face changed from predator to protector at his trademark top speed and you melted. I got a bit of homework to do tonight, unfortunately, so I won't be much fun, he said casually as he pushed off the wall. Come and keep me company, though. I like you best when you're snuggled up next to me. Uh, okay, he said shyly and followed him back to the lounge room. Hey, uh, the day you saw your mum get taken, he said as he sat down on the lounge and took his hero visor off, patting the seat beside him, did you happen to see the guy's face or anything? Uh, yeah, I I did, you said, thinking back to that day. Oh, you could see from where you were behind the fence, he asked. Um, no, I saw the guy's face when I walked past him, you said, still trying to drag that image forward in your mind. Wait, so you did walk past the guy? Hawk said in surprise. I didn't know this part of the story. What happened? You told Hawks about how you had seen the black car come towards you down the street as you were walking to your house, and when it stopped out the front, you just pretended like you didn't live there and went to walk past, but the guy grabbed you and you thought he was going to arrest you, but then he just ushered you on, and that's when you hid in the neighbor's front yard and watched them through the gap in the fence. Hawks listened carefully to your story, then he broke out into a wild smile at the end. I'm so proud of you, chicken, he said gently as he gazed at you. You really walked past some guy who thought you was going to take you and you stuck to not turning tail and running away. You're definitely not timid, he added as he leaned over and pecked you on the lips. You smiled with pride and nodded. Yeah, I'm hardcore now, you said with a big smile. Oh, he purred, his expression turning from innocent pride to something a little more devious. Now don't go saying stuff like that around me. You're going to make me want to ditch homework and study up on human anatomy, he leered. Can you focus for one minute without your mind going there, you squealed as you reached behind you and grabbed a lounge cushion, smacking him with it. His melodic ring uh, laughter rang out through the small apartment. After dinner and discussing details about what you remembered of the guys who had took your mum, you settled down to watch some TV while Hawks looked through the RTA folder, searching for something that might help him find your mum. He hadn't said anything to you about her having been taken by people who seemingly weren't from the government, but the fact that he had brought it back up made you a little suspicious. Kiko, is mum okay? You asked him suddenly from where you were lying on the couch between his legs. He looked at you from over the top of the folder. What makes you ask that, chicken? He asked softly. I just, I get the feeling that something's wrong, he said with a bit of worry in your voice. Hawks put the folder down and cupped your face in his hands as you continued to stare up at him with worried eyes. Do you trust me, baby? He asked slowly. Yeah, you replied confidently. Then don't worry, trust that I've got it covered. He replied with a smile as he manoeuvred slightly so that he could kiss your lips. He pecked them lightly once, then squished your cheeks together so your lips would pucker up. Then he kissed them rapidly, multiple times. It's like kissing a pufferfish, he exclaimed excitedly with a devious chuckle. You squealed and tried to pull back to escape his kisses, but he wrapped a leg over you to pin you down and continued kissing your squished face merrily. You made all kinds of noises as you fought hard, finally managing to break free and get out of his grasp. Oh, he leered cheekily. My chicken has flown the coop. He jumped up and shot towards you with his wings out, and you screamed playfully and ducked behind a chair before tearing off down the hallway and hiding in your room. Oh, chicken, he sung as he crept towards your room. You crawled under the bed and waited with bated breath, watching as his shadow fell across the doorway and his feet appeared. Hmm, he hummed loudly. I wonder where she could be. Next minute, a feather slid up beside you, poked into your sleeve and dragged you out from underneath your bed. Oh, hey, he greeted brightly. Fancy bumping into you here, he added cheekily as the feather lifted you up and plopped you down on the bed. He was on top of you in an instant, pinning you down gently so he could kiss your lips again. That's not fair, you pouted playfully as as he pulled back. You have feathers to help you find me. Ah, he sighed. True, but all's fair in love and war. Ugh, so poetic, you replied sarcastically as you pushed him off. I'll give you my feathers next time if you can beat me in a wrestle, he said mischievously as he pinned you down again. 
a playful struggle ensued and you were pretty sure that he let you win in the end but he made you work for it and you were sweating and breathing heavily as you finally got on top of him and pinned him down. He lay under you, allowing you to pin him down by the wrists as he smouldered up at you. You got me chicken, he said seductively. What are you going to do now? You remained silent for a bit, still breathing hard, thinking about what to do, then suddenly a bold thought came to you and you leaned your head down to his. You hovered your lips just over his, like what he usually did to you, and then gently took his bottom lip between your teeth and tugged on it slightly. Hawks' eyes shot wide open and he stared at you. Oh my gosh, that's so embarrassing, you squealed as you released his lips, uh, his lip from your teeth, embarrassed that you'd been so forward. You let go of his wrists and slapped your hands over your face, feeling the heat rising in your cheeks. That was so hot, Hawks said in awe as he sat up, with you straddling his lap. Whoa. No, you wailed. That was so embarrassing. No, it wasn't, he replied wholeheartedly. You made the first move. That's sexy as hell in my opinion. I'm all sweaty. I'm going to have a shower. Bye, you squealed as you jumped off him and ran to the bed, out of the bedroom, leaving a very confused yet turned on Hawks on your bed. She's slowly getting there, he thought with a smirk as he hopped off the bed and tucked something into his pocket as he walked back to the lounge room to continue reading through the license plate folder. He sat back down and opened to where he had left off. Hmm, managed to skirt the question of where her mum is too, he thought proudly. As his eyes scanned the page, a name popped out at him and he let out an enlightened and amused chuckle. <laughs> well, well, isn't this interesting? Is this a coincidence or not? And that is the end of chapter 37. Stay tuned for chapter 38.